The office laid silent, devoid of any life. No sound could be heard outside of the screams from the bowels of the factory. But here, here it was quiet. The various clocks had been given up long, long ago. The air was filled with dust and grime, smelling dead through its neglect and emptiness. Shattered glass, broken computers, they were scattered all around. Broken pieces of furniture and old bloodstains telling a horrific story of violence that had been swept under the rug. In some instances, literally. The toys of the factory avoided the office. This was due to the ferals that lurked in its vents. They were dormant, sleeping. The occasional growls in the office's ambience being a simple snore. The feral mini huggies were the primary source of danger and deep inside of the dusty old offices. They're like you. A forgotten little doll. Well, six foot weren't quite little for a doll, but in comparison to the other monstrosities inside of Playtime Co.'s factory, you were a dwarf. To remain sane, you had taken on the activity of tracing circles in the thick layers of dust. It was quiet enough to not awaken the little ones and just enough stimulation for your mind to not completely lose yourself. A sad existence, but it was all that you had. The toy you had been turned into was a human-sized Joycelyn doll. The Joycelyn line of dolls were very humanoid, with realistic proportions even. Minus the giant eyes, of course. They were on permanent puppy mode, too. The Joycelyn puppets were themed after a young, homeless teen. Abandoned. The original model for them even being a real teenage homeless girl that had lived in the neighborhood of the toy's designer. Your hair was a dirty blonde that was long enough to reach your hip. Brown rags covered your dainty frame. With a thick tear-shaped crystal stuck in your cheek, right under your eye. As part of the toy's gimmick, each doll came with adoption papers in the package, as well as a plastic claw meant to pull the tear out of. Actual clothes, not just rags, were sold separately, of course. The reason you and the many Huggies ended up here was simple. The prototype. A gigantic biomechanical monstrosity. To hide, you had covered yourself in the blood of one of the dead employees, making you smell and appear like just another corpse. Yet, the worst part were the many Huggies. Even though you entered together, and there should be some kinship among, you know, fellow toys. They had made clear they weren't your friends. The feral nature made them lash out against you. It was all thanks to you playing dead, they eventually gave up the chase. Leaving you hurt and broken. Your right arm was completely torn off. Your right leg, a mere stump leaving only your thigh. And ironically, they even damaged your face, leaving the tears stuck in your cheek as mockery. At least you still had one functioning eye. <sighs> but you couldn't even cry. That would have made them come back, awaken them, as if it would have been too loud. Yet despite all that, 
What traumatized you the most was that you had forgotten your name, your face, and you only vaguely knew that you had been human at some point. But who had you been? You quietly rolled on your back, only to immediately slap a hand on your mouth. Without you noticing, something big had managed to step behind you. The giant Hagiwagi looked down at your face, its wide eyes staring at your torn up features. He was smiling, but you knew that was a sort of neutral expression for the Huggies. He had a bit of damage. Patches of his synthetic blue fur were missing and some tufts of hair were caked together with dried blood. The scars that were revealed indicated that this was most likely his own blood as well. This Hagiwagi had gone through hell, it seemed. Ironic, really. The monster blinked as he tried to stay calm. He looked from left to right. Obviously, this one didn't know where he had wandered into. It opened its mouth, revealing its sharp teeth, and immediately put a finger on your mouth, which made the monster stop moving and close its massive jaws. Interested, Huggy tilted his head. Without as much as a whisper, you pointed at the vents above you. Huggy ignored the warning, just reaching up to the vent, lifting the cover. You exhaled sharply as you watched him build himself up to his maximum length to look into the vent's opening. And he blinked in surprise, seeing all the mini Huggies crammed together. Their eyes open, just staring, and yet he could tell they were sleeping. Quietly, the giant closed the vent cover, once again focusing on you his big face coming super close to yours. Your one left eye twitched. He wondered why he wasn't attacking you. Though then again, not all toys were violent. Most were just opportunists, who hated the people that did this to them, so they only were a danger to human. At least he could tell that you weren't one. PJ Papa could... Seemed as if this one could tell that you weren't human at least. PJ Pagapillar, having mistaken you as a human once before, had attacked you. You just barely managed to escape. Huggy then wrapped one of his long arms around your hip. Scared, you put as much of your hand in front of your mouth as you could to suppress your scared screams. But Agi wasn't eating you. He gently placed you on top of the vent. Your stomach turned at the thought that the violent piranha monsters were just under your butt. And then the blue monster did something you didn't expect. Agi Wagi grabbed one of the computer screens, raised it above his head, and threw it on the ground. The loud shattering was deafening, and the reaction was instant and quite disturbing. They awoke. The ones who didn't wake from the ruckus from the shattered screen were awoken by countless screaming other mini Huggies just following the noise. And just as the vent beneath your legs was kicked open by a mini Huggy, the big one just winked at you, before booking it, surprisingly fast as well. You leaned forward as far as you dared, watching a flood of colorful mini Huggies screech, growl and hiss at the big one who was running away from them. They were all so fast. Huggy Wuggy around the corner, many Huggies behind him, and then you could only hear them. 
until even that slowly echoed out. He exhaled loudly. Your little heart was pounding. Sweat covering your forehead. But as silence was once again returning to the office, you couldn't help yourself. With your one remaining hand, you slapped your cheek, laughing maniacally. An act of kindness in this hell. Not only directed towards you, but an act of kindness from... What up until now you had considered an enemy? He had saved you. You slammed your fist on the metal of the empty vent, the thud echoing through the empty complex. Laughing. You were laughing. This was your voice. Oh, you had forgotten how it sounded. It was the sweetest melody you had ever heard. A real genuine tear ran down the empty eye socket of your damaged face. You didn't even care that you were so high up and essentially stuck here. At the very least, you could finally be loud again. With a twitching, functioning eye, you began to loudly tell terrible jokes to yourself, slapping the vent's metal whenever you finished one to simulate laughter of an audience of specters. After a while, you let your head hang low, exhausted. Your voice soar from the screaming and long neglect. You sighed, bumping your head into one of the metal suspenders of the metal tube you were sitting on. You closed your eyes peacefully, placing your hand on your chest. Though due to the nature of your new skin, you couldn't feel your heart. At least you could hear how fast it was beating. It was hours later. You had enjoyed letting your foot wiggle in the air, maybe a little too much. But after such a long time of no input, this, this was heaven. That was then that suddenly the lights in the office were turned on. It made you jump and almost fall off the vent. Someone was coming. You gulped, looking towards the noise from the same corner. The blue huggy wuggy reappeared. Its fur now stained with fresh blood, and its upper lips looked a bit bitten. Well, chewed on, but undoubtedly he had survived. His head was focused on you as he knew exactly where you were. As you watched him approach, you gulped waving at him. Now came the real question. Was he here to eat you? Or was this all just a setup? His arm wrapped around you again, this time a little less tight. And he pushed you against his chest, carrying you like a mother would a baby, or maybe like a child with a doll. You exhale through your mouth. His chest was wet with red liquid. And it smeared on your mostly clean body. Though despite that, you found comfort in it. You may even accept it if once you opened your eyes, you'd see his gaping jaws right before his teeth clamping down on you. But that moment never came. The two of you walk for a while. But eventually he set you down in a place that looked like a train yard. You blinked. The factory was bigger than you could have ever anticipated. You haven't seen these tracks in forever. Huggy sat down on a nearby bench, you still clutching in his arms. Where he then just looked at you with an almost expecting expression. You blinked, trying to figure out what he was thinking. Suddenly you felt his other hand run down your thigh, 
making you wince at the sudden sensation. But... At the gentleness of his touch, your body immediately reacted in an unpredicted manner. By slapping him with your hand. You shrieked, making yourself as small as possible in his grip. You just made a mistake that could cost you your life. Like a snake, he tightened his arm around you. His face coming dangerously close to yours as a deep rumble came from his chest. He wasn't amused. You gulped as breathing became more difficult. And you could smell the decay coming from his gut as he opened his mouth. You closed your eyes in anticipation of death. But instead, the hairs of your neck stood up as you felt his sharp teeth slide against your skin, hooking themselves beneath the crystal tear before tugging and pulling violently. With a loud pop, it was removed. Shocked, you brushed over your cheek. The skin beneath didn't feel real, and it was hypersensitive. Huggy spit the gem out onto the tracks, before once again looking down at you. He was breathing out of his mouth. His hot breath hitting you right in the face. Judging by his actions a second ago, he knew what he wanted. And honestly, of how tight he was holding you right now, you had to admit he drove a hard bargain. And well, you were a toy. Might as well be used like one too. With your free hand, you waved him down big head next to yours, you gently placed it against his cheek. With quivering lips, you muttered a quiet apology for slapping him, before calling him your hero and kissing him on the lips. It was vile. His lips tasted like unclean rubber, leaving a bitter aftertaste on your lips, and yet he didn't budge. He wasn't attacking you, of course, but he also wasn't reacting yet. Your lips brushing against his as you tried to nudge him further into whatever you were doing. And Huggy suddenly growled, similar to that of a large hound that was enjoying belly rubs. Carefully, you moved your head away from his lips. He was slowly letting go of your body. With your one hand, you managed to cling onto his fur, but he pushed you down to the ground, shoving you on your back. Huggy climbed on top of you, pinning you down. There was blue fur everywhere. His face appearing above yours again as he leapt out a thick, sticky-looking tongue. The large organ was black and slid up your shoulder to your head, leaving a thick trail of salvia. You shuddered. Like an oversized dog, he kept licking your face while his hands slowly tore at the rags that you were wearing. Clearly what Huggy Wuggy wanted to do to you, clearly what he wanted to do to you required you to not wear anything at all. With a shaking hand, you pushed against him, making him hesitate for a moment. Taking the opportunity, you managed to open up the buttons of the brown ragged jacket that you were wearing. Huggy purred like an oversized cat as he looked down at your exposed self. And he grinned a toothy grin upon the realization that, in fact, you did not have a Barbie anatomy. But exactly what he desired. His thick tongue now licked up, starting from your belly button, slowly making its way up your chest, 
to your chin, to your face. It made you shiver. And admittedly, you moaned a little. This... This was going to take a while. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive.